We were walking in the cam on campus and from a distance we saw a fellow with a, uh, with a date with a, an attractive lady. And I could see that I wanted to meet Judy. And about three days later, I found her number and I called her and we were married for almost 46 and a half years. I had just um, gone running with a friend. We were running through Shaw Park. Um, I think we did three miles, four miles maybe. And that was probably a couple days before I went in just for my normal checkup. I had been on a diet for three years and actually lost 70 pounds, got quite slender, I was very athletic, and for some strange reason, my clothes started getting tight. I was going to the bathroom frequently and that I um, would eat, but I wasn't really hungry and I would get full very quickly. Maybe I said something like, um, besides looking pregnant and I'm still and I'm working out, everything's fine. But I also thought that because I wasn't as active, because I had retired, I was just gaining weight. And I had no idea that I was going to be diagnosed with cancer. I got the phone call and I, I just remember, I just, I think I just cried. I don't, and I think I didn't believe it. I hung up the phone, curled up in a ball on my bed, and didn't get up. Called my husband um, to come and sit with me because I didn't really know how to handle it. I didn't think something like this could happen. Uh, I've always heard about it happening to other people. Didn't think that it could happen to my mother. I tried to see her, you know, as you know, our lives get so busy, but try to I would try to go see her as often as I could could do to possibly be with her. My dad and stepmom live in um, Florida and then my mom was at Innsbruck. I guess I was just in a phase until I started realizing, God, this is pretty serious, everyone's coming here. I go through surgery and um, it's stage three C which is not good. We decided to tell the kids that they're gonna take my ovaries out because there was something on them. And then if there was cancer in it, they were gonna take it out. They were super scared. So I had to be, I mean, we all had to be like super brave. I kind of knew it because I had known those signs and symptoms. My aunt made it very clear what the symptoms were. I remember her saying, you know, my parents lived to 100, almost 100. And here I am in my 60s. 70s and sick. It just went so fast. I was in, you know, it was like diagnosis and then quickly to oncologist and then this scan and then surgery and then right after surgery we're getting ports put in and you're going to do chemo and you're doing this and we're meeting this doctor. It paid off to know those signs and symptoms and to be empowered with the knowledge that I needed to pursue things and not ignore them. She cared so much about everybody. Um, even towards the end, when we were sitting with her in bed, she would um, be worried about us. What did you eat today? Go, go eat, go get something from the kitchen. A wonderful person, wonderful mom, wonderful wife, an overall wonderful person. We kind of knew the handwriting was on the wall in the last month before she had seen the doctor for the, basically the final time. And, and she talked to him and we talked to him and you know we got the, the final prognosis that there was nothing more that could be done. She was it, just always was smiling and laughing and right up to the very end the last picture taken of her um, when the friend came over and uh, we were in bed and I put my face next to hers it was uh, just a, a big smile on her face and you know that was maybe three days before she passed away.
They started in 2002 and it was just a small group of women who wanted to make sure that, that education was key, getting the word out about signs and symptoms. And they also wanted to give themselves, give towards research and analysis to find um, better ways to diagnose the disease and, and better ways to treat it. And then they also wanted to provide a support network for one another. And those are the three main parts of SLOCA's mission. SLOCA is a wonderful organization. Um, the, the volunteers that come to the chemo room and they pass things out and the events that they have. When you have a diagnosis such as ovarian cancer, you need something to hold on to. Just to be able to talk to someone who's gone through the same things um, was so huge to me. And then within the ovarian cancer community, online and in support groups in town, we help each other. And it is truly a group of volunteers. It, it's, it's run almost entirely by volunteers with staff that helps us keep moving forward in our mission. More and more people come to us asking questions, wanting to help, sharing their stories. Every day you, somebody tells me somebody else is sick and there's somewhere out there somebody knows is very close to figuring out why. You can't be passive, you have to be very aggressive about your own health all the, the research and all the, the th uh, things that, uh, that SOCA is doing for our, uh, current cancer patients. We want to be very involved with it. My purpose is to help other people and make other people aware of the symptoms of ovarian cancer. A lot of people don't know about it, so I'm ready to talk about it. What would St. Louis Ovarian Cancer Awareness do if a cure was found? And I can't imagine anything more fantastic. You have to have Sloka until there's a cure.